And it is our pleasure right now to bring on Nicholas Ashar, the Managing Director for the Michelin Guide in Asia and the Middle East. And we're, and we're also going to bring on Ivan Brem, the chef owner of Nuri Restaurant. Nicholas, Ivan, welcome to the show. Great to have you with us today. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Neil. Hi, Ivan. Hi. Hello, right. everybody. Thank Great you. Hi, here. Ivan. Ivan, uh, we hope you're not taking you away from the kitchen. We assume you got to get there pretty soon at some point, right? I got a couple of minutes to burn. Okay, good, good enough. We'll we'll go uh, we'll go quickly. Um, Nicholas, let's start with you. I saw you guys uh, a couple of months ago at a foreign correspondence of Singapore event, uh, talking about Michelin and and the um, what's been happening with the restaurants over the course of the pandemic. And a few things really struck me as being quite amazing in terms of the uh, innovation that had happened. Take us through kind of a high-level overview of, of what's been going on with Michelin restaurants in Singapore and around the region uh, during the past couple of years. No, well, thank, thank, thank you, Glenn. Uh, thank you, Neil, for, uh, for, for inviting us. I would say, uh, you know, we had, uh, like all the industry, we had two complicated years. Uh, but what is interesting is that we are a guide for the consumer. We are a guide where we help uh, the people travel, discover, dine out. And uh, I mean, with the recent uh, announcement of the easing of the COVID measure, we are very glad for the, for the industry, for the F&B industry and the restaurant. And in fact, uh, ironically, I mean, the, the F&B and the and restaurant scene has been booming. Uh, to give you an idea, in 2016, when we launched a guide in Singapore, there was 138 restaurants. And last year in 2021, now we have 260 uh, restaurants in the Michelin Guide. We have three, uh, three, three stars, five, two star, and more than 40 one star. Wow. So, see, so five years of history, and in fact, despite COVID, a booming, uh, a booming scene. And what we have seen also, what I mean from personal uh, experience, is that uh, booking seems to be a fully booked uh, for some restaurants. I guess uh, Chef Ivan will be able to to tell us more about about that. But globally. Uh, now, I mean, when we see fine dining and, and restaurant going quite well. Well, Ivan, let, let's talk about that because Glenn... Sorry, we should clarify. Is it Ivan or is it Ivan? What do you prefer? Potato, potato. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we want to get it right. <laughs> Ivan in Singapore. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ivan, Ivan. <laughs> I'll just keep saying both. No. Um, that's a very yeah. interesting point, actually, that, because when Glenn and I were talking about this off-air, he was explaining to me, having attended your, your discussion, that it was a boom for Michelin restaurants, which, of course, kind of runs contrary to the perception during COVID. We had those wonderful Facebook campaigns, you know, Singapore rescue, uh, restaurant rescue campaigns to help save the F&B industry. But yet I'm hearing now that restaurants like yours and others did very well and are continuing to do so, which is fantastic. But, uh, I mean, how, what is your take on that, how, Ivan? How do you explain that? I think collectively it was a very harrowing time for everybody. Uh, but Michelin gives restaurants like mine a, a special type of validation, I guess, and we we make good use of those. Obviously, it doesn't come with a lot of hard work, but um, and, and I would say there are many industries within the F and B industry, and and so while it's uh, very correct to point out that. Um, Michelin restaurants have managed to survive and go through this unscathed. Some have thrived. Um, it, it isn't the entire picture for the entirety of the F and B scene. Mm. Yeah, fair point. And Ivan, what was what was what were a couple of the big takeaways that or the innovations that you um, had to realize during this time to 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 keep at, at the top end and and to keep things really moving forward in a positive way? How did how did you change Nuri? I think all all restaurants that that uh, we associate ourselves with had to really reinvent themselves very quickly. Uh, I would say I opened four restaurants during the pandemic, wow. um, and and every every time there was a lockdown before and after, it was literally uh, digging new concepts and trying to figure out ways to stay relevant and also add value to people's lives because. Uh, the job of a chef uh, who does restaurant food for delivery is very different to some in some regards to the job of a chef who is hosting guests in his own dining room, right? And, and so uh, we, for example, uh, during lockdown, converted the entire team to save the cost of, of using platforms like Grab, which we eventually kind of brought on board. But for the uh, majority of our time, 
we actually convert the entire team into uh, drivers, logistic, uh, logistic people, um, chefs, and, and a whole R&D team so that we could actually go to people's homes, deliver food, instructions. And it was quite a beautiful thing to watch. It brought us closer to our guests, uh, literally, physically, uh, into their dining rooms at times, uh, unpacking mm. food and, and giving to them. So these, these were some, some things that we did quite, quite well, I'd say. But uh, it was still very much a nerve nerve wracking time, as I'm sure it was for yeah. everybody. But um, but just to jump on that for a second, Ivan, nerve wracking time, harrowing. You mentioned we had many chefs on our show during that period, who said it was pretty much hand to mouth, week to week, and yet you still opened four restaurants during the pandemic. I'm just curious to know where did the optimism, the confidence, the belief come from? What what, uh, what, what were you seeing that other people were not perhaps? A, a small a small correction there, Neil. I, I meant it figuratively for restaurants. I reopened because we relaunched our oh, I see. multiple I see. times. I see. But I did open <laughs> one <it>. restaurant <laughs> during COVID. Appetite, which is on the second floor of Nuri, is very much a COVID baby. And I think the, the optimism came from the fact that at a time where we're literally asked to be apart from one another, uh, to refrain from social contact, that the things that people would crave the most when we opened up were indeed social contact. You know, we're being close to one another, being able to share a meal together and experience together. And we're noticing with the decrease in every social distancing norm and regulation, as, as we are positively witnessing uh, towards the end of this month, we also see the positivity increase and in people's willingness to spend time together sharing a meal, not to forget I always say this, but restaurants are pretty much the last social enclaves we still have uh, available to us. Places where people just randomly meet strangers uh, and and uh, get to see other humans, right? So I think the optimism came mm. from that conviction that whether we like it or not, we're social creatures and we all need to eat. Yeah. We're talking with uh, <laughs> Ivan Brem, uh, the chef owner of Nordi Restaurant, and Nicholas Ashar the MD, Managing Director for Michelin Guide Asia and Middle East. Uh, Nicholas, back to you. Um, the As you're listening to, to Ivan talk about his experience, uh, does that seem to resonate throughout uh, the other Michelin-starred restaurants and or the ones in your guide? No, def definitely. And, and I would say, coming back also to Neil's uh, question before, I mean, we have now, I mean, we have the past two years, I've really a cycle with uh, ups and downs, and, and, and we have seen the resilience and adaptability of all the industry. And in fact, uh, it has accelerated trends that were already there, but we saw acceleration of trends. And for us, it was three trends, digitalization, sustainability, and as Chef Ivan said, also uh, delivery. For instance, digitalization, for us, uh, we used to be a book, now we launch uh, a mobile app on iOS and on Android. It's free to read, it's free for everybody. Uh, we launch also a website you have, when you have uh, editorial content uh, on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, just uh, last week also, we started a new uh, recommendation update every month. We had four new restaurants. So you see, really digitalization, uh, we are uh, accelerated uh, both uh, for, of course, for the restaurant, but also for the guy. Second one we see, second trend is sustainability. Sustainability, uh, yesterday was a Earth Day. So, and uh, now, I mean, consumers are more and more sensitive about what they eat and also, uh, and they are, and, and, and also the impact of all the industry on, on, on the planet. And in 2020, uh, the Mission Guide launched the Green Star to reward uh, restaurants who have an impact on the, on the planet and to reward uh, sustainable gastronomy. And last but not least, exactly as Chef Ivan said, we saw a tremendous adaptability and resilience of restaurants, and especially with, uh, with delivery. We saw, I mean, the meal box, with also with, uh, with videos of Chef, we saw also butler service, and even with the Mission Guide, we had our, our own share. We, we partnered with the Singapore Tourism Board and Grab to make partnership between Ochre uh, Chef and uh, Michelin Restaurant, so between Big Gourmet and Michelin uh, Restaurant to bring during COVID, to bring uh, to the consumer, to bring, I would say, uh, menus from Oakers and from a uh, fine dining. Nicholas, so I'm see. fascinated to hear you talk about sustainability. Yeah. I think the Green Star is, is fantastic. Are you starting to look at plant-based food options? Is that something that Michelin now takes into account or where are you with that? 
It is, but it's it's more global. I would say it's more global uh, in, in terms of approach. You have chefs who do uh, from farm to table. You know, who have their own garden, who grow their own uh, grow their own food. Also, the impact of restaurants, the water, the energy. Also, the the, the waste. Also, you see a lot of chefs reducing the waste. So I would say it's more global than only a, a, a food a food plant. Uh, I mean, sorry, a plant food. And also at Michelin, we don't, uh, we still, we are not against meat. So that's why I would say it's still part of. Uh, so that's why I would say it's uh, sustainability is not only uh, plant plant based food. It's part of it. But not. Yeah, um, Ivan, when you you've lived and worked all over the world, uh, as I've read your your background from New York to London to uh, working in the Basque region uh, of of Spain, uh, from what I understand, the the ability to source the the products, the foods that you want. Of course, many parts of Europe they have a slow food um, movement uh, where you can get locally grown things and 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 that sort of a feel of flavors and and uh, products. How, how do you um, how do you approach your restaurants here, being in a in an environment where we have to you know airlift in everything uh, uh, you know every day or every couple of days? Well, we essentially have 60% of our vegetable produce come from a partner farm or a farm collective from Cameron Highlands. So these are mm. driven and not flown. Uh, and okay. they're literally, I couldn't get closer to a farm to table only if I had a massive plot of land in Singapore. Mm. Uh, and that was a way that we chose to mitigate some of that impact and, and be able to be as, as good, good to the planet as we can. Yeah. And ev ev everywhere that we buy, we buy as sustainable as we can. I I'm also of the same opinion of Michelin that meat has a part to play in our diet. Uh, but the type of meats that we source also make a massive difference, right? And so mm. uh, doing the correct job sourcing is at the heart of all this, choosing organic meats wherever possible, antibiotic-free and hormone-free. And we do that uh, across the board with both our restaurants. Yeah, uh, we because, also lo oh use uh, local suppliers, pardon me, like uh, fish farms and, and uh, herbs and leafy green suppliers that are booming now. And as you know, you've covered this multiple times in your stories. Um, Singapore is making an incredible push to be able to grow a lot more of its produce locally. And these farms keep getting better and better. Absolutely. 30 percent by 2030 is, is the challenge. Uh, Nicholas, I mean, I'm fascinated to know, as you're the managing director of the Michelin Guide for Asia and Middle East. How has Singaporean tastes changed in recent years or adapted or evolved? You know, are you seeing any certain trends in the in the restaurants or the food sources that they prefer to go for? In terms of taste, I don't know if we can see a taste uh, change, but for sure we have seen a, a boom of the, I would say, of all the cuisine in Singapore. Singapore is a hub. We know all type of cuisine are there, but now we see more and more chefs from all over the world opening restaurants uh, in Singapore. The Michelin Guide has been one of the factors, different factors also, but again, when you see 130 restaurants in the Michelin Guide in, uh, five years ago, 240 uh, this, uh, in 2021, and we see more and more chefs coming to Singapore. There have been a lot of announcements also of chefs announcing that they're going to they're open a, a restaurant in Singapore. So definitely Singapore gastronomy is booming. And, and you can see that also a, a lot. I mean, uh, for also to give you an idea, we, it's not only uh, and it's part. Of, we see that in Singapore, but also we have the privilege to uh, observe uh, all the different cities in the world, and we see also that uh, worldwide. For your information, we announced uh, yesterday that we're going to launch a mission guide in, in Istanbul. Also, mm -hmm. we're going to launch a mission guide in Dubai uh, in June, and also in Miami. So you see, I mean, uh, gastronomy is booming all over the world. And mm. in fact, it's not, it's not in, in, in fact in, in terms of taste, but more and more so people, I guess, would see uh, fine dining as an affordable luxury. I guess after, after COVID, people want to uh, enjoy and I would say uh, make good of themselves. And, and food is part of the, of the pleasure of, the, of life. And in fact, uh, we see that uh, it's booming everywhere, which is which is well, reassuring. And we certainly know that in Singapore, right? It is such a massive part of yes. uh, of our life and our culture here at all levels of society. Uh, Ivan, I'm going to give you the last word and and just a, a quick look ahead to uh, to Nordi and what you're doing. What are you expecting now that 
Um, you know, we just had this great announcement yesterday of a further opening, a quite dramatic opening of, of Singapore. We've got conferences coming into town soon, and F1 will be coming in September. Uh, what are you What are you thinking in terms of getting your restaurant back up to a hundred percent or or growth uh, perspective going forward, based on what we're seeing now in our landscape here? I think for the industry at large, it's a return to a return to normalcy, and I feel like that would happen quite quite quickly. For us specifically, I am booked for a, a closure in a couple of weeks. We're going to uh, close the restaurant for an overdue uh, overdue renovation. Hmm. I'm quite excited about the prospect also of relaunching as things reopen, uh, and, and uh, at, towards the end of May we will close and reopen towards the end of June with yeah. uh, the same Nuri but better. Uh, and so we're noticing an increase in reservations as we speak, actually. Larger parties, uh, uh, the, the industry, I, I am fully convinced, will we'll get back on its feet in no time. Fantastic. Yeah. We wish you well. We'll have to do the show from Nuri, Glenn. Why not? Absolutely. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you see, when you get the uh, when you get the fresh look there, we'll be happy to do that with you. We'll be there. <laughs> All right. Our our uh, sincere thanks to Nicholas Ashar, the managing director for the Michelin Guide in Asia and Middle East, and Ivan Brem, the chef owner of the Michelin starred Nuri restaurant here in Singapore. Gentlemen, thanks to you both. We appreciate your time and uh, wish you both good luck. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you very much. Thanks.